I just want to say thank you for being here um, with this virtual capability. You could be anywhere in the world and you chose to be here today. I appreciate you showing up for Freelance Business Month. Um, as mentioned, my name is Ben Albert. Um, I, it was once called Rochester Business Connections. Now we call it the Real Business Connections Network. Um, and I am the owner of Balbert Marketing. We do everything from content marketing to social media, to podcasts, to some consulting, et cetera, et cetera. We'll get into a little bit more about that, but I want to start off, um, with, with a visual, something impactful for you guys. Um, and if you can see it on my screen, you can post in the chat box. What am I holding here? And don't feel like it's a requirement to speak up, but it's a gallon water of bottle. It's pretty big, right? Do you think that that gallon of water will last me this entire presentation? I hope so. What if that gallon was supposed to last all day? It could definitely last all day, right? It's a good amount of water for a day. What if I had to take this gallon of water and that's all I could drink? for the next week, the next month, the next year, I, I'd run out of water pretty quick. Another quick analogy to kind of push in this point is let's say you're stranded on a desert island and you have a water source, you have plenty of water. Um, you, you've got water, you're good, but you don't know when you're gonna be saved. Are you gonna wait until that single water source runs dry to go find more water? Or would you start looking for a new water source a little bit each day to ensure that over time, you don't just have one water source, you might have three, five, 10, 12, and you could live there happily for as long as you have to because you have plenty of water sources. The reason I'm talking about water and whether we have enough or not, and you guys can write this down, I encourage you to dig the well before you're thirsty. Um, before you need a deal, before you need a connection, before you need your next freelance endeavor, you want to be planting seeds, you want to be networking, you want to be searching for water well before <laughs> you need more of it. So what we're going to talk about today is how to dig the well before you're thirsty, how to ensure that you have leads and opportunities and partnerships and your brand gets bigger all of this together through the power of intentional networking so that water never runs dry and you don't wait until you have nothing in in your pipeline to go and try to figure things out so to tell you my story really briefly because i know we're short on time is i i've only been a freelancer um and really a sole proprietor business owner for two years um, when COVID hit in March, I was furloughed from sales executive role from it, with my marketing firm. I'm here in the United States, so I'm working for a marketing firm. Every, and we're, we have clients everywhere, um, Texas and California and New York City and small cities as well. Here's the thing. Our number one product was video production and video marketing. And we have clients all across the states. So the moment COVID hits... I don't have any clients. I don't have sales. There's no way. I, it's not that I didn't have any clients, but it was hard to fulfill orders. It was hard to gain new clients, new sales, because there was no travel and there was no in-person video. So I'm quickly furloughed from that role. Um, and I find myself, like many people, in a really dark spot. Um, it was about five to six months before I even considered starting my own LLC and kind of doing things for on my own. Um, because I didn't know where to go and and I needed knowledge and I needed mentorship and I needed connections and all my connections were, you know, all across the states. They weren't local. So it was really hard to start a business out of the blue in COVID when you're not very well connected. Um, now, in just over a year, magically, somehow, and we can get into how, I replaced my sales executive income as a freelancer and a small business owner. Um, and none of that is to impress or brag or any of that. It's to impress upon the point um, that if you can take all my nosebleeds and failures and the systems that I didn't realize I was doing, but now I've helped quantify, um, if you can take this system, I call it the CAN system, you can, too, grow your freelance business and have a lot of fun doing it 
and network with great people in a way that doesn't always feel icky or transactional. I don't know if you're like me, sometimes networking feels kind of icky. This is a way that can be fun and uh, collaborative. So what are we actually talking about today? I call it the CAN system. There's lots of C's, I'm blocking one of them right here, but it's create and network, collaborate and network, content and networking. I like to say community, I like to say collaboration, I like to say uh, lots of C's really, but create, collaborate and network. And the, the, the thing I wanna urge you guys to, to think about is networking doesn't have to be icky and transactional. This is my business card. This is who I serve. This is what I do. If we can create and collaborate specifically on content while we network, we can find a beautiful way to come to the table with a vision, create something with someone, share the love. And we'll get into a few more of the, the benefits here, but I, I wanna ask you guys this question. Do you ever feel like you're doing everything alone? I know I did. It was in the middle of COVID when I started my freelance career. I, I was completely alone. Um, and it was through collaboration and networking and the beauty of an event like this where it's virtual and the world gets smaller. An event like this, the world gets smaller and you can meet people all across the world. It was by creating, collaborating, and networking with like-minded people, with freelancers and business owners, that I realized that I didn't have to start my business alone. I could stand on the shoulders of giants when I started my career. So this breakdowns uh, uh, some of the principles here, some of the basics of why you should collaborate to create content. You build a relationship with your other collaborator. And I, I do want you guys to, to, to think while I say some of these things, how is this going to work in your life? We're going to brainstorm later, um, but I host a podcast. That's, that's my form of collaboration. But there's many ways that you can collaborate with people. We're going to brainstorm label, later. But the beauty of two, not one, is that you are building a relationship, that you are learning from other brilliant people who may know things about specific topics that you don't know about. They might be five levels in front of you, but they wanna put their chips on you because they see you as a mentee. You get to collaborate with your peers. The real beauty is you're building your career is you're sharing audiences. So you don't just share this out to your audience, they share out um, your collaborations together with their audience as well. You can become influential even by association if you collaborate with someone who's three steps ahead of you, people are going to think you're cool and talented. And honestly, you are cool and talented, but by associating with these bigger names in your industry or in an industry that's similar to yours, you're going to be more influential by associating with these people. You're sharpening your skills because you're getting peer feedback. You're getting the yin to your yang, different perspectives as you collaborate and learn. And I just wanted to add it twice building relationships, mutually beneficial relationships and partnership agreements with collaborators. Always put a question in the chat if you have one. I, I can, I'm kind of free training through this. I, I realize that. If you do have questions, put it in the chat and I'll save some time at the end. So I like to jokingly say it's like PB and Jelly. Peanut butter is the content you're gonna create to build your freelance brand and your freelance career. We love peanut butter, jelly. We love, whether we love networking or not, it sure goes good with peanut butter. I like them both, but we can take peanut butter and jelly, mix it together, yum, that's good. And, and they both taste good on their own, but they don't have to be done on their own. They can be mixed together for a perfect sandwich that you can take on the go. So I'll give you my strategy really simple is just a case study of how this could work. Um, so when I launched my podcast, it was called Rochester Business Connections. Now there's five different podcasts on the real business connections network. So over time I was able to scale, but the concept of um, Rochester Business Connections 
was as simple as it sounds. So I'm from Rochester, New York. I'm a new business owner and freelancer. I want to connect with other business owners in the Rochester area. I was a tiny minnow in a massive sea of sameness. I'm starting a marketing firm. Everybody seems to have a marketing firm these days. But I knew that I was different. And I knew that I had value I could bring to the Rochester community where I was born and raised. So I started Rochester Business Connections and I started to reach out to strangers on LinkedIn. They were total strangers at the time. But I went to the State University of New York, Brockport. We call it SUNY Brockport. So I reached out to other SUNY Brockport alumni. I was reaching out to alumni with a simple message. Hey, I'm looking to start a local business podcast. I see you went to SUNY Brockport as well. Congrats on making it big time. Not everybody replied to that connection request. Not everybody gave me the time of day. But the people that replied, I swear like 75% of them wanted to be on my podcast. I didn't have an audience yet. I didn't even really have a name yet, but they were willing to put their chips on the little guy because we had a commonality that we went to the same school. We were both business owners and freelance entrepreneurs, um, and we both were from Rochester, New York. So one question to ask yourself, and we'll do this. It's kind of like a homework brainstorm at the end. Um, one question to ask yourself is what is your niche? Who is your target? Who can you learn from? And here's the beauty in this strategy is I didn't go in podcast episodes with business owners saying, Hey, I'm having you on the podcast to pitch you products. No, we came on the podcast to create content and value together, share audiences, network while doing it, build a relationship together. And then the back end icing on the cake, you better believe I understood that they were a business owner and I was a marketer and there was a possibility that I could serve them. But I wasn't there to pitch everybody I spoke to. More than anything, I was there to learn from other entrepreneurs, business owners, and freelancers that were five steps in front of me so they could turn my years, they could turn their years into months for me because they had knowledge I didn't have. And it's, again, icing on the cake that I have a skill set that they might need. So it's a win-win for really everybody involved. So this is the big brainstorm phase that I am going to go through a little bit quickly because everyone's going to be different. I use podcasting or an interview series as my example because that's exactly what I did. But another thing I've done and I've watched people done countless times is host an event together keyword is together. You don't have to put on the event yourself, get as many collaborators to host that event as well. It'll really cause a big social media push a big buzz because you're sharing audiences. Um, if you're aligned with a similar charity, that's super great. Um, and, and I like to joke about Tom from MySpace. When I don't know who had MySpace, I mean, I'm, I'm not old, but I'm old enough that I had a MySpace and I was obsessed with it. My first friend was Tom. If anyone has a MySpace, they remember the first friend was Tom. And the reason Tom was your first friend is because he created the platform. It's that simple. So if you're going out and hosting events, you are the one creating that platform. You are edifying and making your building your reputation and your will just by being the person that brought the mic. So if you want a seat at the table, maybe you just bring the table. So host an event. You can promote each other on social media. It could be as simple and I, 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 shameless promotion. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Tag me and post a takeaway. By tagging each other and promoting each other on social media, again, you can share audiences, sh shed goodwill, spread goodwill, show the love, and just really love on people. I love guest takeovers. If you have a YouTube channel, just jump on that person's channel and host it for a day. Um, ask a contributor for a quote fact or excerpt of some kind, write a reflection or create a graphic for social media. Um, so again, someone brings a quote to the table, you write a blog post on that quote. I love the graphic concept because let's say someone put together a long research study. You don't have to replicate the study. You can, and it, this is volunteering your time for free. I'm being honest here, but you can volunteer your time to create graphics for their study. So then you have something for your portfolio. They share you, 
attribute the graphics to you. Um, another example in that regard is let's say you are a photographer, you can investment of time, you can make an investment of time into taking photos at three up and coming restaurants in your local area. So you go to restaurant one, two, three, you take photos. Then when you go to restaurant four with your portfolio, you say, hey, I've already worked with restaurant A, B, and C. I thought you'd be interested in this photography free service to update your menu as well. So you investment in time with collaborators that you can level up because you made that collaboration with people uh, of value in the industry you serve. To keep it going, you can collaborate on a product offering or a course. Again, why do it alone? Why do it alone? Build a course or a product with someone else, especially someone with a partnered industry where you're not gonna compete. Um, really, you can actually work with clients together. Collab on giveaways. I feel like I'm beating a dead horse, but all of these work. It depends on what's gonna work best for you. You can collaborate on a giveaway. I already kind of mentioned this work for an influencer for free. Um, I'm not going to blab on too much about this, but I've worked with a lot of influencers and I did it for free in a short time. So then when I show people a graphic portfolio for my marketing firm, I can say I worked with these great people. And especially if they know those people, it makes me look cool. A lot of this is making you look cool, really. But the key is you get to educate yourself while you do it. Um, don't need your time at a special event such as a charity event me and another freelancer were were nerding out about this the other day she makes snowflakes like paper snowflakes they're real pretty and she decorates them and i'm like why don't you donate your time around the holidays you know here in the states celebrating christmas why don't you donate donate the time christmas time people pay thousands of dollars to be on the sponsor list you can get on the sponsor list for free with your actual snowflakes in person so people can see what you create. And yes, you donated time, energy, investment. However, the relationship you get to build with your community by donating that time for that charity event will pay dividends long-term. You could start a pod or an engagement mastermind. This is slightly complicated. The simple way to put it is you start a group, a chat box, a text chain, and you just love on each other. When someone posts, they can post it into the chat group, and then everybody from that chat group can go and engage on that post and really just have a peer group that can engage and mastermind together. And again, why do it alone? You can collaborate together. This is the biggest slide ever, and I feel like we could come up with 20 different ways, countless ways to collaborate and network. This is just a brainstorm to save you a little bit of time. Take any of these ideas or expand on your own because based on your industry, your goal, who you serve, it's gonna look different for everyone. So I don't have a ton of time, so I'm gonna go through these collabs really quickly just to, to share the point without every little individual detail. Richard Vanderbloom is one of the top LinkedIn um, influencers. Every year he puts out a study on the LinkedIn algorithm. It's very comprehensive. So I partnered with him to create over 20 graphics on that study. And this isn't the greatest stats on earth, but it's pretty darn good for LinkedIn and it's pretty gar darn good for Ben Albert. 50,000 impressions, um, 20, 30 something shares, over 600. So very, very good engagement on this one. And really the key here, guys, is I think someone needs to mute here. I think it might be Nigel so accidentally unmuted there. Um, so really simply put, Richard did all the work of spending a year of study. We just created graphics and because of his audience and his community, a lot of them became friends and connections of me through partnering with Richard. Hala Taha is another collaborator. She is a podcaster, young and profiting podcast. I had her on my show. 
um, did my best to over deliver, over delivered in the follow up in the content, her team loved it, and then replayed my interview with her on her show, her shows like 50 x the amount of listeners is mine. So by bringing value to her and her audience, she basically 50 x my reach by replaying. Um, and I worked with graphics with her and again, when I post Hala Taha, I get way better graphics because she has, you know, 200,000 followers and I have far less than that. So that's just another collaboration example. A reminder for you guys, relationships equal referrals and recommendations. So as we're building relationships, this leads to referral and partnership opportunities, not always with the person that you've collaborated with the relationship but their entire network and Rolodex of great people that you potentially could help and serve. Um, there's a stat that really helps prove this. 97% of customers cited testimonials and peer recommendations as the most reliable type of content. So I call it a free trial. When I work with Hala Taha, when I work with Richard Vanderbloom or anybody I've worked with, in essence, for free to create content together, they understand what it feels like to uh, work with me. They understand what it looks like to work with me. They understand what the collaboration process looks like. So they haven't hired me, but they have a feeling as to what it would be like if they did. So since they have a free trial, it's far much easier for them to be a cheerleader and advocate for me because they understand what the process of working with me looks like. So it's easy for them to make that recommendation or referral. This is the quick brainstorm that we won't be able to do today. Sometimes this presentation is an hour long, but this is something I'd like you to write down because this can be homework for you. And it's as simple as what do you do? Who's your target audience? What are the best referral partners or collaborators to reach that target audience? ways you can steal them from my list or create your own that you'll use can again create and network collaborate and network content and networking you don't have to do it alone ways you'll use can in the channels you are most comfortable on to use can are you going to do it in person at a, a donation charity and host an event are you going to do social media blasts? Are you going to start a podcast? Are you going to take pictures? Are you going to do graphics? All the things. Don't take podcasting. Just I think it's kick butt. I'm an advocate. But don't just because Ben did podcasting, you don't have to replicate that model. However, you can do it in the way that fits you and your purpose and who you are um, is the best way to do it. Really quick analogy. And it's a freelance business month analogy. How often do we brush our teeth? How many times a day? You can put it in the chat box. Three. Wow, you guys are clean. I, I usually brush them twice. So we brush our teeth on average one to three times a day. For how long? Like a couple of minutes? You tell me. I brush them for about two minutes. We'll go with two. So I've heard five before. I've heard 30 seconds. So you brush your teeth twice a day for approximately two minutes a day, every day. Who's going to have better teeth after a full year? The person that brushed it twice a day for two minutes a day or the person that went to a teeth brushing conference, rapidly brushed their teeth for an entire week or even an entire month and decided, ah, I'm good for the next 11 months. I brushed it enough. Who's gonna have better teeth? I'm not destroying events. I'm destroying the concept that if you come here and don't take action, it's similar to vigorously brushing your teeth and then stopping. If you just implement five minutes a day, five minutes a day, anything you learned here or any time during freelance business month, you do five minutes a day, who's going to be more successful in a year? 
the person that took the five minutes a day or the person that stopped after freelance business month. Now imagine if that was 15 or 30 or the amount of time that suits you, but imagine you just took 15 to 30 minutes a day with one thing that you learned all month, where will you be in 12 months? You can answer that question for yourself, but I believe with incremental growth, you will be more successful than the person that didn't put in that extra five, 10, 15, 30 minutes. I was concerned there wouldn't be a ton of time for Q&A. That's part of why I did post this. You can scan it or you can go to bealbertmarketing.com, balbertmarketing.com. Um, and on ultimately all my projects, all my social links, my Calendly is there. Anyone who attended this is open to book a time with me. I'd love to potentially collaborate with you walk through how you're going to utilize some of these systems or just learn a little bit more about each other. Um, for easiness, I have my LinkedIn copy pasted. So that's there as well. Um, because I'm sure there's an answer that didn't get a question that maybe didn't get answered. Um, so feel free to spam me, send me some questions. Um, I really don't have much to sell you. A lot of us are in similar industries. I'm looking for collaboration and networking and great people. We also host um, monthly events that are totally free. So I might ask you to come to one of those, but I'm honored to be here. I'm going to take my own advice. I'm going to other speakers because I'm going to try to write down some notes and figure out what I can implement um, to make the rest of this year and next year just kick butt.